Hello all, in this presentation we are going to discuss about mnemonics in community medicine. This presentation will be helpful in remembering the headings and confusing points present in community medicine. This presentation consists of nearly 16 slides which is compiled based on the mnemonics which I have come across and through contributions from my friends. This presentation may not cover all the mnemonics which are available. If you feel that I have missed out any good mnemonics which you know, please post that mnemonic in comment section. We can try import those mnemonics in next part of this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So we are moving chapter wise from the beginning. So first is this mnemonic in epidemiology. So all the 16 slides of my presentation have been arranged chapter wise. So this is a mnemonic from epidemiology. This is criteria for judging causality. This criteria is called as Hills criteria or Broadford's Hills criteria. This consists of six criteria which is uh, given here. So it is uh, temporal association, strength of association, specificity, consistency of the association, biological plausibility, coherence of the association. As we all know, these individual headings can be understood easily, but while writing in exams, we may miss some of these headings. For this, we have created a mnemonic that is toxic shock syndrome check BP continuously. T stands for temporal association, S stands for specificity, one more S stands for strength of association, check C stands for consistency, BP that is biological plausibility here, continuously C stands for coherence. So that this is for the criteria for judging causality. In exam it will be called as Hill's criteria for judging causality or Bradford Hill criteria. Next chapter is screening. That is here in sensitivity and specificity we have many confusions in formulas deriving the formulas. So in the earlier presentations I have mentioned it is always better to keep this phrase remembered. That is sensitivity is defined as positivity indices. That is, sensitivity is the ability of the test to detect true positives among the deceased. Specificity is negativity in health. You have to remember this phase, negativity in health for specificity, positivity in disease for sensitivity. So here, it is the ability of the test to truly detect the negatives among the people who are healthy. So in predictive values, the most important thing is, all the formulas will be having P's. So positives will be here. In negative predictive values, all the formulas will be negatives. In all these four formulas, we have trues on the top. That is true positivity, true negativity, here true positivity, here true negativity. So all these formulas you have to, when you are writing, you have to check whether the truth is on top. In real life also, truth will be valued above everything. So here, for the four formulas, for the four entities, we have this truth on the top. So positivity in disease, so all P's means positive predictive value, all N means negative predictive value. If you interchange here exactly the same, T, P means instead of T, the here the opposite is F, P the opposite is N. So then you have to, for sensitivity and specificity, you have to exactly opposite the numerator and also you have to include the numerator for the denominator. So that is the ultimate thing about sensitivity, specificity positive predictive value and negative predictive value. When the test has good uh, sensitivity, then we use it as a screening test. When the test has good specificity, we use it as a confirmatory test. Here the sensitivity, sensitivity for example in HIV, ELISA is a good uh, screening test because it has good sensitivity. Western blot test is a confirmatory test because it has good specificity. So you can remember with the fourth letter, sensitivity for screening, Specificity for confirmatory test. Sensitivity for screening and specificity for confirmatory test. So fourth letter is the mnemonic here. Specificity, specificity for confirmation, confirmatory test and sensitivity for screening test. And we have one more mnemonic with the fourth letter. That is, uh, we, we all used to get confused between these vaccines, live vaccines and killed polio vaccines. So we have to remember SAC and oral. So oral L will be live polio vaccine, SAC K will be killed, killed polio vaccine. So oral live polio vaccine by Sabin, killed polio vaccine by SAC. 
that we have to remember for polio virus strains opv 123 so opv 123 so opv type 1 is mostly involved in outbreaks of paralytic polio which is still prevalent in this world type 2 and type 3 has been already eradicated type 2 was the first to eradicate p opv so 2 is a potent antigenic strain which was eradicated from the world prior to this type 3 so type 3 has been recently eradicated ov which is most commonly associated with vaccine associated polio so type 1 type 2 and type 3 opv so o stands for more outbreaks causing more outbreaks which is type 1 most potent is type 2 and most uh, strain causing vaccine associated polio is type 3 and for the types of vaccines we have star cas pneumonic so that is subunit vaccine toxoid vaccine attenuated vaccine or live attenuated vaccine recombinant vaccine and killed vaccine or inactivated vaccine so star cas is the pneumonic here subunit toxoid attenuated recombinant killed now we are in in, pneumon, in nutrition chapter for assessment of nutritional status we have the assessment methods including this clinical examination anthropometry biochemical evaluation functional assessment and all so all these things you have to remember by a b c d e f g h so we don't have anything for g but if you arrange in a b c d e f g h so anthropometric studies biochemical studies clinical evaluation diet surveys ecological surveys functional status health and vital statistics so you can keep you can remember this assessment of nutritional status with the mnemonic a b c d e f g h food toxicants we always get used to confuse between endemic ascites neurolethrism and epidemic dropsy so we have to uh, uh, we always confuse between these diseases and between this mechanism and between this toxicants so here we have a mnemonic for this this is sad bsnl s stands for sanguinarin a stands for arginimon oil when it is mixed with must, mustard oil it creates this toxin that is sanguinarin and ultimately it will cause dropsy so dropsy this dropsy is epidemic so epidemic dropsy you may say endemic dropsy it's not endemic dropsy it is epidemic dropsy so sad bsnl sad is sanguinarin arginimon oil epidemic dropsy so bsnl so b stands for bova sativis n stand nl stands for neurolethrism so when you are clear with this two the other one out is endemic ascites which is nothing but when crotalaria is mixed with this junjunia pyrrosolidin alkaloids will be there so it will cause it will it will create hepatotoxins and ultimately resulting in ascites and uh, it will cause endemic ascites so food toxicants these three will be the confusing thing so you have to remember two based on sad bsnl and the third one endemic ascites the third one endemic ascites will be the remaining one now in nutrition we all get confused between uh, what is the lacking amino acid in serral and pulses so to clear this we have to pronounce this as serral and pulse so serral means serral it sounds with l so it will lack with lysine pulse pulse s it sounds with pulse s so it lacks with sulfur containing amino acids that is cysteine and methionine so that is the mnemonic you have to remember serral lacks lysine and pulses pulse it lacks sulfur containing amino acid you should not say serrals and uh, you should not confuse that also i am re reminding you here it is serral and pulse you have to remember that way and protein content of the milk humans contain 1.1 percentage of protein content cow's milk and goat milk have th about 3.3 percentage that is three times buffalo's milk have 4 percentage protein four buffalo contain 4.4 percentage protein content in their milk so now here effects of heat stress shocks you can remember this way so effects of heat stress can be heat stroke heat uh, hyperpyrexia heat exhaustion heat cramps and heat syncope so how can we remember this is shocks that is stroke hyperpyrexia exhaustion cramps and syncope shocks will be the mnemonic then we have in uh, entomology the disease is transmitted and remember this is disease is transmitted this is not disease is caused so 
mosquitoes will be dealt in the next slide so the rim, for all these confusing uh, vectors we are going to see the mnemonics so for first we are going to see for the louse louse can be remembered with pert mnemonic pert that is for p stands for pediculosis e stands for endemic typhus r stands for relapsing fever and t stands for trench fever disease is transmitted by rat flea it is given by the mnemonic bench so bubonic plague b e e n stands for endemic typhus c stands for chigorosis hymenolopsis diminuta h for h so rat flea can be remembered with the mnemonic bench uh, the louse can be remembered with pert next we are moving to mite mite is see all we all remember we can remember each mite can uh, uh, each mite causes scabies that is a known fact the other mite is the trombicloid mite so we have to remember it as misses so m stands for mite r stands for rickets seal pox s stands for scrub typhus misses m stands for mite that is trombicloid mite not your each mite each mite will be caused by scabies that you can remember clearly and disease is transmitted by soft tick is qrs q stands for q q fever r stands for relapsing fever s stands for soft tick so where is the topic soft tick here it stands for q r s that is q fever relapsing fever is caused by staph soft tick q r s so then we have disease is transmitted by sans fly it is uh, it is coos that is k o o s k stands for cholera is there o 2 o we have oriental sore and oraya fever s stands for sans fly fever here we can remember the sans fly coos as a mnemonic k o o s c c fly c c fly as the name indicates it is c for sleeping so you can remember it is easily black fly or onchocerciasis ridwit bug chagas disease these are all uh, are unique diseases you don't have to uh, confuse between these things and uh, this heart tick also you have to remember by your own uh, because if you remember these by a mnemonic this heart tick will be uh, left uh, one so this group of diseases such as uh, tick typhus viral encephalitis viral fever viral hemorrhage fever kesnur forest disease tularemia tick typhus human babesiosis can be caused by heart tick heart tick will be confused with q uh, soft tick so here we have to remember the mnemonic qrs so in mosquito borne diseases many of the students remember this very clearly without mnemonic but some students will confuse for the diseases and the vectors so for this anopheles and malaria these are all unique anopheles and malaria mansonites and uh, brugen malariasis these are all unique but uh, culex and aedes these are all set of uh, diseases so for culex we visited japanese bank is the mnemonic so v stands for west v stands for uh, viral arthritis j stands for japanese arthritis b stands for bancroftian filariasis diseases is transmitted by aedes cried cr yd cried so c stands for chikungunya and hemorrhagic fever r stands for rift valley fever y stands for yellow fever d stands for dengue and hemorrhagic fever dengue hemorrhagic fever so these are all the mnemonics which we can remember qlex we visited japanese bank aid is c cried c r y d so principles of primary health care so the mnemonic here is either you can mention it as ias or ac inhibitor ac inhibitor so that is ias i stands for intersectoral coordination a stands for appropriate technology c stands for community participation e stands for equitable distribution so here we have to remember this is the principles of primary health care most of the time this principles of primary health care components of primary health care all these elements of primary health care will be confused with principles of health education and uh, components of health education so you should be clearly differentiating between primary health care and health education so elements of health care here we have eight set of elements the mnemonic here is elements itself elements itself is the mnemonic for elements so e stands for education about the health problems l stands for locally endemic disease control and prevention e stands for essential drug provision m stands for maternal and child health including family planning e stands for immunization here the immunization is not i immunization here it is a immunization and nutrition nutrition and food supply n stands for nutrition and food supply t stands for treatment of common diseases and injuries s stands for safe water and sanitation so for elements of primary health care elements 
ஈஎல்இஎம்இஎன்டிஎஸ்இஸ்தனிமோனிக் நோட்டிஃபைபிள் டிசீசஸ் அண்டர் டபிள்யூஹெச்ஓ திஸ் இஸ் காமன் கொஸ்டின் காமன் டூ மார்க்கர் அண்ட் காமன் வைவா கொஸ்டின் ஸோ வாட் ஆர் ஆல் த டிசீசஸ் நோட்டிஃபைபிள் அண்டர் டபிள்யூஹெச்ஓ ஸோ அட் இன்டர்நேஷனல் லெவல் த ஃபாலோவிங் டிசீசஸ் ஆர் நோட்டிஃபைட் நோட்டிஃபைபிள் டு டபிள்யூஹெச்ஓ இன் ஜெனிவா அண்டர் இன்டர்நேஷனல் ஹெல்த் ரெகுலேஷன்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் வி கேன் ரிமெம்பர் பை த நிமோனிக் எல்லோ கப் Cholera, plague, and yellow fever. You can remember it as yellow cup. That is yellow C cup stands for cholera, and P stands for plague. Yellow fever, cholera, plague. Now we are with the last mnemonic. That is functions of voluntary health agencies. For the functions of voluntary agencies, we will have so many functions supplementing the work of government agencies, pioneering, education, demonstration. guarding the work of the government agencies advancing the health legislation so here we can remember this as the mnemonic as a gasped so g stands for guarding the work of the government agencies a stands for advancing health legislation supplementing the work s stands for supplementing the work of government agencies p stands for pioneering e stands for education d stands for demonstration so this is gasped for functions of voluntary health agencies hopefully this presentation was useful to you if i get more mnemonics in comment section we can plan for part 2 of this video all the best for your exam preparations in coming weeks we are going to discuss about important health days and its significance and epidemiology revision till then please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon for further updates thank you